This painting was hidden in the owner's father's estate for many years. I saw the name and I did some research and found out who the painter was. The painting was created by Julien Dupree. Julien Dupree was a French realist painter. He was born in 1851 and died in 1910. He was an expert in painting realistic scenes such as laborers, farms, and threshing wheat, etc. This painting exemplifies his realistic style. The way this painting shows maidens and cows near and far away is exceptional. It has clear signs. Julien Dupree worked mostly in canvas, but this rare piece is in panel. The painting is untouched and in wonderful condition. The frame enhances the painting's beauty. Cradle panel prevents the panel from creating cracks. The value of the painting is... We would value this painting at $25,000 to $40,000. Wow. <laughs> Nothing beats having a piece of memorabilia of your favorite sports team. The opportunity to relive the moments of joy, pain, and laughter just by the sight or touch of the object is one not worth trading for anything. This is the case of our guest who brought a Willie Mays worn Minneapolis Millers jersey. He bought the jersey at a collector's show for $50. The Minneapolis Millers were an American professional minor league baseball team that played in Minneapolis, Minnesota through 1960. This jersey was the home uniform of the Millers and it dates from 1950. The jersey, which is number 28, belonged to the player Willie Mays, which he wore in the 1951 season. The guest did some research to determine the authenticity of the jersey. Lettering and the ribboning on the front of the uniform, but a dead giveaway was this team repair yeah. on the right sleeve. The team repair mark amazingly appears in the photograph here. The jersey, which is still in very good condition, is appraised to be about. In the sixty dollars to $80,000 range today. Oh my. In 2019, the price fell to between forty dollars to $50,000. What do you think will be the price today? Let us know in the comments. This lovely porcelain dessert set has been in the guest family for a long time. He had appraised the set earlier in the 70s to be around $700. It was believed not to be of English origin, as it was not marked, being likely to be of early French descent. The appraiser has this to say. Actually, this set is absolutely English. Oh, really? There's several ways I can tell that, but pr primarily because it is soft paste porcelain. Uh -huh. If it had been French, it would have been hard paste porcelain. This set is said to have been made between 1800 and 1825 by Coalport, having the distinctive notches present on pieces at that time. It is a dessert set made for serving sweets, baked goods, and fruits. The set is made of 15 beautiful porcelain pieces. Yeah. The value on this is not so much the age as the decoration. This is considered spectacular decoration okay. and therefore is quite valuable. The appraiser values them at? If we add together this set, uh -huh. a retail value or an insurance value would be between twenty and thirty thousand oh. dollars. Oh my my mom's gonna see this and she's gonna ask for a bag probably. This is one of the largest and most spectacular books ever seen on the Roadshow. Its title is Drawings by the De Always Family, Salon. Salon is the former name of Sri Lanka. The owner received this book from her aunt. This beautiful book is associated with the important Sri Lankan family De Always. It's filled with absolute stunning watercolors dating back to the 1880s. The quality and workmanship and scholarship of them is just absolutely wonderful. The book showcases Sri Lankan plants, trees, nuts, fruits, and breathtaking flowers. These insects highlight the natural history of Sri Lanka. What might be its value? Nowadays, I would expect it to make something closer towards 10,000 pounds. Wow. Wow. Gosh. Passed down through generations, this baseball holds a significant place in history. Originally given to the owner's grandfather by a groundskeeper at Ebbets Field, it remained tucked away in a closet for over 50 years. Dated June 23, 1859, this baseball commemorates games played by the Brooklyn Atlantics, the first champions of organized baseball. Despite its age, the ball shows signs of wear, expected for such a rare artifact. Handmade and hand-stitched, it bears the stamp 29 at the end of Atlantic, with unclear references to time and 15. Here's the value of ball appraised at... This ball has a value of $20,000 plus. Really? Wow. Yeah. The guest inherited a pair of bowls from her father, which originally belonged to her great uncle and aunt. The intricately designed bowls had molded surfaces with a fretwork pattern. There are circular roundels on the bowls with delicate painting, exhibiting enamel decorating with gilding. 
Made of high-quality porcelain, the bowls were likely produced in Jingdezhen, China. Okay. These would have been used for special occasions, so it's a mixture of functionality and art. Markings on the bowls indicated they were made during the Great Ming Dynasty, Chang Hui period from 1464 to 1487. The wooden bases accompanying the bowls were likely made between 1930 and 1950 and perfectly complemented the bowls. The estimated value of the item would be between fifteen and twenty-five thousand dollars at auction. Wow, <laughs> that's all I can say. These watercolor paintings were passed down to the guests from her grandfather. These American Western watercolor paintings were made by the artist Olaf Karl Seltzer. Seltzer was a painter and illustrator who did over twenty-five hundred paintings and illustrations of the American West, including cowboys. He was mentored by his friend, the artist Charles Marion Russell. Seltzer's paintings represent the second of the two generations of Western art. There's the first generation, including Remington and Russell, and they were really capturing the vanishing West. His work captured the myth of the West, offering more imaginary images than the first generation. The smaller pieces of the Native Americans are probably a better subject. The detail that you can see in the figures is quite extraordinary. He was known for the great truthfulness he brought to capturing these scenes. The appraiser values a mat. Smaller pieces, I would estimate at between six and eight thousand dollars a piece at auction. Oh, you're kidding yes. me! And the larger piece at between eight thousand and twelve thousand dollars. Oh my word! Wow, that's amazing. A 19th century painting was presented by the guests which belonged to her husband's grandfather, who passed away in 2003 at the age of 107. The painting features a signature at the lower left corner, a tribute to a Russian artist named Wilhelm Velton, and dated 1867. His work received a lot of appreciation in the Russian market. This was painted early in Velton's career. The artist's paintings are normally small in size, but this one is large, adding to its value. The particular painting has several condition issues, including in-painting, Crackalure and tears. It's mounted on plywood, which further affects its condition. How much would the item be valued? I would give this an estimate of perhaps fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars at auction. Wow. Okay. The guest purchased this light fixture from a friend of a friend who was selling some items. Impressed by its beauty and uniqueness, the guest bought it for one hundred seventy-five dollars approximately four years ago. Originally intended as a wall hanging, the fixture was converted into a ceiling lamp by a previous owner. Duffner and Kimberly operated from 1905 to 1911, declaring bankruptcy in 1911. Despite their short lifespan, these creations are highly valued by collectors. The fixture features a wisteria shade, a highly sought-after design by major lamp makers. The appraiser describes it as one of the prettiest sconces he's ever seen. The appraiser estimates the fixture's fair retail price to be between eight and $12,000. And, and I would have it reworked so it goes back to a sconce. You could certainly hang it and, and enjoy it enjoy in your it home. home. That is awesome news. Yeah. <laughs> the guests came to the show with Tiffany's iridescent favril and calyx vase. This invaluable iridescent favril is adorned with vine and leaf patterns, while the calyx-styled vase is more an artistic piece. Looking at the bottom of the iridescent favril piece, you will see an M suffix indicating that it was made in 1915, while the calyx style piece carries an A at the bottom indicating that it was made in 1903. Assessing the value of these fancy pieces is quite simple because they are very rare and still retain an incredible amount of vibrancy despite their age. The calyx piece is valued at around $7,500, while the iridescent favril piece is valued at around $6,000. Whoa! <laughs> oh my goodness! The guest purchased the High Boy at an auction in Louisville, attracted to it because it reminded her of a similar piece in her family. Made around 1765 to 1770 in Connecticut, the High Boy features typical New England characteristics like pad feet and a distinctive angular knee. With a beautifully shaped skirt and similar cut sides, while well, the exact maker is unknown. It is in remarkable condition for its age, with original dovetail joints indicating that the top and bottom sections are not married or associated. A label on the back from a Connecticut antique dealer dating back to the 1920s or earlier adds to its authenticity, mentioning colonial relics, which this piece certainly qualifies as. Despite the missing plates, the high boys valued between twelve dollars to $18,000 at auction. I love it. <laughs> the 
guest acquired this table from the estate of an elderly lady who was their neighbor and a dear friend. They purchased it in 2004 and believe it to be an Art Nouveau piece made by the Toby Furniture Company. Toby Furniture Company, originally known for arts and crafts furniture, likely produced this table in the early 1900s. The table style has been debated, with some suggesting Rococo revival or Regency revival. But the appraiser leads towards Art Nouveau, noting its resemblance of French and Belgian designs. The table features intricate detailing, such as step molding and a sculptural base, showcasing Toby's interpretation of European style in a more muscular form. This table is considered rare due to its limited availability. The appraiser values it between four dollars to $6,000 at auction, noting its potential to attract significant interest and exceed. This guest took us back to memory lane with the Beatles poster and ticket that he bought in 1966. The Beatles was a popular English rock band comprising John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. This iconic poster was printed for the Cleveland concert, which was considered one of the wildest concerts where the fans broke loose and invaded the field. This is a very rare Beatles poster that would still be worth around three to five thousand dollars, while the original ticket from the concert would be estimated between one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty dollars. Really? It's yours. Oh, the auction. Oh, great. Pima Woven Horsehair Miniature Baskets was brought to the show by a guest whose wife inherited from her mother. She picked them up out in a Navajo reservation in Arizona. Their woven baskets are made in southern Arizona by the Pima Indians. The baskets date to about the 1950s and 1960s. Pima Woven Horsehair Miniature Baskets are special because they're handmade with intricate patterns and are tiny works of art. Pima Woven Horsehair Miniature Baskets add beauty and culture to any space. The appraiser valued each basket to be $125. This guest brought this iconic, well-designed bottle to the show. The bottle was made around 1910 by Carol Warner, an itinerant artist who is best known for her work with color on metal and bottles. This bottle was made with extraordinary carved and painted wood with a cheery and distinct color. Most of the bottle was an intricate painted scene depicting a German wood carving at the other end. This is a large and beautiful bottle and still maintains its impressive condition. The bottle still holds a retail value of around three to four thousand dollars. <laughs> That's pretty astonishing. The badge belonged to the guest's great grandfather, who was the first black customs official in New York City, starting in 1907 until his passing in 1945. The badge is enameled gilt bronze and is quite rare, even without its historical significance. It is numbered on the back and would typically be valued at two to three hundred dollars. However, when paired with the photograph of the great grandfather wearing the badge on his hat, the item's value increases significantly. It becomes a piece of interest for those interested in African American history and could fetch eight to twelve hundred dollars at auction. The guest item is a Civil War medicine kit that belonged to their great great relative, Charles Bast, who carried it through the war. It includes various vials, one of which was for overeating and drinking. The kit is a pocket pharmacy sold to soldiers before the war. It's dated 61 and has been passed down with letters from Charles to his sister. In terms of value, if it wasn't a family piece, a kit would retail for somewhere in the three to five hundred dollar range. However, due to its family history and personal significance, it's considered priceless to the family and will never be sold. Rolex Red Submariner watch was brought by Consigner to the show. All Rolex watches are made in Geneva, Switzerland. The Consigner narrated on how he got it. In 72, I worked with a gentleman and we scuba dove together. He had a Rolex watch and we went diving. I thought it would be nice to have a watch like that. The plastic watch was bought in 1972 at Montego Bay for $129. The watch's fascinating history was the red submarine that adds to its value and makes it a rare special piece. The classic features of dependency, waterproofness, earn the brand worldwide figure. The consigner valued the watch to be between fifteen dollars to $17,000. Amazing. Thank you. 